now it's time to move to our next speaker. So, who is uh, Dr. Noelia Barrabes, who is now in Austria, working at the Technische Universität Wien, sorry for my pronunciation, <laughs> and she will give a speech about climbing the academic ladder. But first, Noelia, we also have a video for you. So let's see if it works and enjoy it. Noelia Barabes studied chemical engineering at uh, the most famous university to us, University of Rovira y Virgili in Tarragona, and she did PhD in heterogeneous catalysis. She was developing nanostructured catalysts derived from hydrotensides and especially studying nitrate reduction, so water purification system. During that time, she, already, uh, she started her international adventure in Belfast, in Vienna, and San Sebastian. In 2009, Noelia moved to Montpellier for a postdoc at the CNRS ENSCM Center, working on layered materials for catalysis. Shortly after, in 2010, she got an IEF Marie Curie, combining catalysis with in situ spectroscopic study, hosted at the TU Wien, including long stages at ICH. I remember there was nothing in the lab, absolutely nothing when she joined. And I even remember, yes, yeah, she bought a pH meter as one of our first equipment. Can you imagine a pH meter in an empty lab? That was how it was looking like. Uh, most of the times uh, when I used to enter the lab, I used to see Noelia working on an um, infrared spectrometer. Uh, that is the first sight I would most of the time see when I enter lab in the morning at nine o'clock. In the group, she was like a mother to all of us, caring about us like little kids. Professionally, I would say she was like the dream postdoc colleague that everyone would like to have. Uh, always there, ready to help and teach. We shared together more than one year of great experiences, which I will never forget. We were friends before. I see IQ and we became even more friends after. So she was really down to the ground with us and really had a lot of fun with her, especially after her keynote. I'm sure she will remember how was the Tubo de Saragossa. In 2012, she moved to Geneva and she got to SNSF Marie Heimwert League Fellowship. At this point, she could start developing her main research topic with the synergy of nanoclusters, surface science, and catalysis. Since she finished the PhD, Noelia was able to fund her research career and work independently, while also managing two maternity leaves. So it felt quite, um, quite, uh, let's say, um, vacuum when she left the lab. I think she left the lab around 2012, so I was almost there for two years. And I think we really missed her afterwards because she was the, she was there when we all started all means all the PhD students started as a, starting the PhD. She's a great scientist. I think I don't need to mention that. I think that what I would like to stress is a positive mentality, which helped me to shape the new group with positive vibes. I remember many things of Noelia when she started in the group with us. And at that time she was really a strong woman in science. I could really tell that she would become something like this and she really uh, fulfilled what was the expectation, I would say, because we were also uh, just starting PhD and she was also taking care of us a lot, but she, we could see that she was already um, very focused on what was her, her future and nothing could be really standing in in between her and the future. Since 2015, Noelia moved back to Vienna to do her uh, habilitation and started her research group called PlusCAT, focused on the atomically designed heterogeneous catalysis by metal nanoclusters. She had a lot of successes. 
but also went through tough times. And I'm sure she can tell you stories about her career today. Noe, the floor is yours. Are you okay? <laughs> yeah, it's tough. It's tough. <laughs> that thank you, thank you, Jordi, Atul, Antonio, and Susie. So so nice. <laughs> you are also included, and I have some funny stories as to explain. And yeah. <laughs> if you need a couple of minutes, please don't worry no. at all. <laughs> no, I need to show the the strong woman <laughs> in science. <laughs> then. Great. Then I, I I go for it. Perfect. So please feel free to share your screen when you are ready. Yes. Uh, okay. Hope everyone can see it yeah, correctly. We can see. Yeah. Perfect. Good. Then the presentation of Margot, I love it. Margot was super nice. And mine is a little bit different was difficult when I said, okay, a career talk. Uh, we are used to, to do science talk. <laughs> uh, but uh, then this drawing, actually I did it two years ago for, for a grant application that they asked me to do my career development plan. And like this academic wall for, is like a ladder that climbing to it, it's getting deeper and deeper and deeper. <laughs> and I will try to show you how I was going from one step to another and trying to give this, the tips that maybe can be useful for you in the future. First of all, uh, who I am, <laughs> yes, I think I was a really nice introduction. I'm originally from Barcelona, even I, I grew up in Tarrasa, but then I moved to Tarragona to study at the Rubia de Vigili University and since then uh, so I went through some, some countries and something that also will be present during my presentation and something that I came, that they were my companions in my research career are my two daughters. Then now where I am, I am in this point in Europe, in the nice city of Vienna. I, now, when I saw the presentation of Margot and I saw so much photos, I thought ah, I need to put some photos of Vienna, but then you should come to see it. It's a cultural city, a really nice place to live and rank it one of the best places to live in the world. And I'm working at the Technical University, like one also of the older ones, at the Faculty of Chemistry, Institute of Materials Chemistry, and here I started my group, <laughs> my small group. Right now, this is the photo we took it last week. <laughs> and a part of that, uh, I'm doing teaching, like from the lab to <laughs> remote and lectures. And also since some years, I am really active in what is FEMCHEM, that is the Association of Women from the Technical Chemistry Faculty working for gender balance and possibilities, the possibilities of women in science. And like, I just put here, like, what is my, my group now? Like what we are doing? Because like how I arrived to here, because like I was introduced, I studied chemical engineering and now I am doing like more what would be between physics, synthesis and physical chemistry. Then let's start in the journey. And the journey starts in Tarragona, where I start my, my degree. And then I start to do what was a lecture before. I don't know if it's still there, that it was like research laboratory. And was like to have some contact with research. And I <laughs> end up in the catalysis heterogeneous group with uh, Professor Paco Medina. And I started with the nitrite removal. It's a, a topic I like it because it's for drinking, uh, drinking waters, like environmental friendly, but was the first time in my life to see kind of a reaction mechanism 
or a catalyst or I remember when Paco was explaining it was a TPR and I was looking to this graphic saying like but I don't see anything what he's saying but okay <laughs> I understood engineering but I was going down 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 to understand a little bit more this was like the there that was before like in the old system <laughs> was the PhD was five years to the there that was kind of the master and then the three rest of the PhD and here I started synthesis, nanoparticles, <laughs> different oxides, and I did like from laboratory scale to industry. And the funny thing is like, if you look to the photo, I don't know if you will see me because I'm here and I am included by Photoshop. And one of the reasons that I was included by Photoshop is because great part of the time of my PhD I was not in Tarragona. <laughs> like I was in, I read here in Vienna, in, in the same institute, the Institute of Materials Chemistry in the group of catalysis. And where was my first studies with spectroscopy and to study some mechanisms. And then I went to Belfast, like also continuing with in situ spectroscopy. And for this, one thing is like I was trying to get the money always. I wanted to go, I want to explore Europe, I wanted to see another research labs out of, of Tarragona and the Rubira. And for this, I applied to the mobility fellowships. I wrote these Acciones Integradas project to be able to go to, to Austria. And then I won the, this, this award that helped me to go. Then if I summarize my the timeline of my PhD, starting, let's say, 2006 after, after the day till 2009, like <laughs> half of the time I was not there, it was Vienna, Belfast and San Sebastian. And also something curious is like the time that I was in Vienna and Belfast, I was already thinking, okay, the PhD will end, but I need to go. I need to go someplace after it. I need, want to do my postdoc and I need money. <laughs> then at the time in Vienna and in Belfast, I was working in the lab and the other half of the day, I was writing my Marie Curie project. And actually I submitted my Marie Curie project when I was in Belfast. Then I submitted the Marie Curie. I finished my stage in Belfast and then I write my thesis. And this was defended in March 2009. And I put this photo because uh, like, it's a little bit small, but the lady in front of me, it's my colleague Karin nowadays. And here is uh, Jordi Yorca and Antonio Palomares, Antonio Eduardo Palomares, <laughs> that uh, are nowadays my collaborators. But this is like more than 10 years ago. What helped me to get the Marie Curie was like the, the thesis was awarded and I got some publications to make a strong the CV. Like the science at the end is everything about numbers. But when I finished, actually, I still didn't know about the Marie Curie. It was like I was the first one in the research list. Then was not clear if I would get it or not. Like the cut of the money was just before me. Then. I got to, uh, to go to Montpellier with uh, Professor Didier Ticit is a wonderful person. Like I remember him watching the, <laughs> the Le Tour de France <laughs> in the, the, this time you cannot go to the office because he was just saying the tour. And this year I moved to France, the tour was passing through Montpellier and all the institute, we went out to the street to see passing the tour. <laughs> just for five minutes but we were there and even I was not speaking French uh, this was kind of problematic with him I started I developed more my synthetic skills let's say like and like more for material science focus but when I was there I remember Didier was uh, like a father in the group and I was in his home with his now, I don't remember how many cats he had, but a lot. 
and the wife was uh, cooking and we were going out for dinner in Montpellier because actually I was the only one of his group. I was the only member, me and the technician. And was quite sad for him when I got to know that I got the Marie Curie and it was time to go. And, but uh, like there are decisions that you need to take and even I was really, was really nice to work with uh, Didier. I decided to take the Marie Curie and the Marie Curie in principle was hosted in, in Vienna at the TU to, to go one step further. Like, uh, okay, I had my background in heterogeneous catalysis, more in kinetics, and I had some little experience with uh, synthesis and a little bit of spectroscopy. But this was a project like to go through uh, move to in situ spectroscopy and to go to the really to understand what was going on. The problem is like when I was the plan to go to Vienna, the Institute of Vienna was moving because before it was out of Vienna at the in, uh, veterinary uh, institute that was is out of the center and now they was in the center of Vienna. <laughs> then everything was in boxes. And I, I was panicking, like, okay, I have two years grant, but I cannot do anything. And then was in a Europa Cat in, in Salamanca, uh, when my colleague Karin, <laughs> that I know her from being here, introduced me at Sushi. And at this time, she, I, I know him, and I know that was the next uh, group leader coming to ICAQ. And I remember meeting with Atsushi and saying, look, <laughs> I would like to work with you because I don't want to go to Vienna because also for several reasons that I cannot, um, I cannot work there. And also for personal reasons, like my couple is there. And like Atsushi said, <laughs> the lab was empty. And I, I tried to help to build it and like this was the infrared that Atul will see me every morning <laughs> working with it. And with Atushi I learned a lot. I, not only science and spectroscopy and modulation and time resolve measurements, uh, but also I learned to grow like a scientist and like a person and like to start from scratch with an empty lab. And also without money <laughs> at the beginning, okay, no without money, but like now there starts the, the rise that you need to get money and to grow. And also was the starts thing with the uh, X-ray synchrotron. And then the, the most, the remembers I have from the thick is the evacuation. <laughs> we were the only lab with gas bottles. And this was kind of a challenge in the, the institute that was mainly for synthesis. And we had a lab full of, uh, sensors, gas sensors all around. And it was so sensible that when we had the ethanol bottle open, <laughs> it was just jumping. And we were not in so fast to call security that we evacuated the building, I think. I don't remember if it was two or three times. Uh, all issued out on the street. And we were the last ones <laughs> to go out because we were trying just to close all the the sensor still, I've, like, if, Atsushi, you are not there anymore. And then what we do was to close the sensor that was in the lower level, like when we were cleaning with ethanol, was not just all the alarms on. But at this time, okay, in Tarragona, I married at this time. And who was my husband, uh, had the, the postdoc to go to Geneva. And then also, like, the Marie was career was running and then I need to start to think to the next step. And the next step like was like the location was fixed. I need to go to Geneva. Looking which group I can fit there. <laughs> no, with my profile, actually it was not a regional sketal system. But suddenly, like was uh, Professor Burji. And Professor Burji actually was the, the supervisor of Atsushi in the ATH Zurich. And I remember how Atsushi just called him. And thanks to him, like I had a place to go 
to the group of Professor Bourget at the University of Genève. Like the Marie Curie was hosted in Vienna, the last months of the Marie Curie, I actually was in, in Vienna. And during these months, my last months of the Marie Curie, I figured out that I was pregnant. Then in one of my trips of weekend to go to Genève, I faced to go to the office of Professor Bourgia. This time I didn't know him so good to sit and say, I'm so sorry, I cannot accept the postdoc because I'm pregnant. Uh, I cannot work in a chemical laboratory. Then it's not really point that you are hiring me. But uh, he was, he's a really nice person. Like you can see at Sushi then was like a mentor of him before. And he said, okay, we will figure out, uh, maybe I cannot give you like the project uh, contract, but I can pay you some months. Then my last months of pregnancy, like this, I moved there was February, 2012 till June, 2012, when was born my, my first daughter. I was doing time resource spectroscopy. Why? Because here I was just working with water in a laboratory where it was not gas lines and was not dangerous. And then he told me to do some DFT calculations. <laughs> I'm sorry, I am an experimentalist and I am not a theoretical person. But I remember everyone was laughing. I was entering in the office and like my belly was so big <laughs> that I hardly was reaching the table. And then at the end, I was putting the, the keyboard <laughs> on my belly <laughs> and just like trying to do some DFC calculations to calculate infrared and BCD spectra of gold nanoclusters. This was my, my first, first meeting with gold nanoclusters. And, but then, okay. I could not go further and then I had my baby in, in June and then I didn't have a job. And it also I was kind of, I could not get the maternity payments from Vienna because I left, but I could not get the maternity payment because I was not enough uh, working in, in Switzerland. But then I, I like say, like always like, let's look for for money and then let's look for the grants even professor burki promised me like we will find some solution for when you can come back to work to the lab and then i prepare uh, to apply to the mari high foglich and this was like to combine the synergy what i know to do and what is the expertise of professor burki because B professor burki was working with gold clusters, with chirality, plasmonics, um, <laughs> not actually with catalysts. And then let's see, okay, let's try to combine these two to with no gold nanoparticles to make them uh, chiral. Then I need to learn synthesis. I need to learn about chirality. And then let's, I will do what I know to do, what to do. Like I know how to prepare catalysts, how to study interfaces and how to study the catalytic properties and this was like the sketch of the project and for this project i needed to go to a hearing and for a hearing for a presentation also they asked me to prepare my my career development plan <laughs> and actually this was what i presented there in Bear, in this big big uh, room with 12 people trying to kill to kill me to qu with questions and like to show how, okay, I started in Spain and down in each, each uh, country is what I was learning for it. Like you, you move from one expertise to another and, but you are learning it. Like, like Margot say, you, you cannot be afraid to, to, to try something new. And here also I show like I had a big break almost a year without being in science and but I had a bigger project in this year and also that made me really really happy but then the grant let me come back to to science and I had my own grant another time and my own project and like was really nice because inside professor 
Burgi, okay, Thomas, um, was really like, I had my group. He gave me a PhD, Bay, and she just arrived from China. And I was working also really close with another postdoc, David Bodka. And like, I had a mini group <laughs> that I could kind of learn. At the same time, like Bay was learning, we were learning both, like the synthesis and the chirality, but at, at the same time, doing what I knew, like catalysis, uh, going to the synchrotron. And this was a really nice because we had these hikes uh, every year, like it was really tough. And the most fit person was the boss, <laughs> Professor Burki. We were all really struggling to really reach the top of these uh, high mountains. And we had a lot of parties and barbecues and acts. But not always the personal life goes accordance. And this time, like I, I went through a tough time, like uh, I got divorced. Then I was alone with a baby of one year old in Switzerland. Then like that the father was working in the same university. Then you start to look to move. Like I was really, I was not comfortable anymore to be working there. And like just the grant was finishing in 2015 and then 2014, I started to look around. I was shortlisted. I went to interview to go to Netherlands, <laughs> but I ended up the second one. But just before this, I got the call from Vienna. Was Karin, my colleague, telling me, hey, Noe, <laughs> I'm pregnant and I need someone to take care of my group during my maternity leave that in, in Austria is one year. Do you want to come? And I say, okay, Karin, I am shortlisted for a tenure track in, in Utrecht. And this is a permanent position. <laughs> and then uh, I need to wait because there is one year in front of a tenure track. But okay, I was enough the, the second. And actually I got super happy <laughs> to know that I was not getting it because actually I didn't want to go to Netherlands. I wanted to go back to Vienna. And I remember I called Karin, hey, I didn't get it, I go. <laughs> and they were actually waiting no, to the answer. Then 2015, I packed my things in Geneva. All the group, I remember carrying the boxes from my apartment down to the truck that was bringing my things to Vienna. And I came with the car that my parents came from Spain to do the trip with me and my little kid of, at this time was two years. And then, like, we start our adventure in, in Austria, 2015. And then I feel like a sushi, <laughs> an empty lab. <laughs> empty lab is an institute that is working in surface science, ultra high vacuum and single crystals. <laughs> then there are no synthesis lab <laughs> here. There is like, I need really to, to start from, from nothing, an empty lab. And okay, I got support from the from the university, but not so much. Then also, like, like uh, yeah, okay, this was uh, Valentina when we came, and the big big help during the first year was that Professor Burgi helped me and support me from Switzerland. And here are my like Bay, who was my PhD supervisor, and the next one is Annelise. It was my master and then continue with the PhD once I left. They came to Vienna to work with me in the lab and they came with me to the synchrotron and everything was supported by, by Professor Burki from Switzerland. And, and then, but life then turned it <laughs> and I met uh, someone else, uh, an Austrian. And also like the biological watch is running. Uh, the animation just jumping. Okay, then will appear at some point. Then in 2016, I got pregnant. And another time I cannot go inside my own lab. Then also was challenging. At this time I started the, just the PhDs. And so master's students that I remember telling them, <laughs> I'm sorry, but I will need to leave. I went to the synchrotron. I went to the synchrotron twice with my belly. <laughs> and like 
like I say, it's more safe to be in the synchrotron measuring than be in my own lab. <laughs> then at least I can do something. And and then was helping also like the big network. Like I have collaborators all over the world and with the support also from the group of Switzerland. And the three hard workers, students I have in the lab, even being alone for the first years, really this succeed to really build a lab and help me to, to have some results even with one, almost one year break of maternity and win another grant here that this is the Austrian funding foundation, Elisa Richter, that this is considered an excellent grant and by the statements of Teubin, this gives me a permanent position. Then at this point, I could secure my position here. And like this arriving to what is today, my research lands. And if I compare with my studies of engineering, there is nothing left. But this is HPs that I was building up through all my career. And, and this is kind of also a message that I want to say, like you, you build your research line through your career. And this is my work from eight to four. And normally in the institute or anyone that is crossing these streets around the institute to quarter to four or 10 to four, you see me running <laughs> because at four starts my second job that it's been a mom of uh, two small princesses. Okay, one pirate and one princess. And, and then when they go to sleep, then I continue. And recently I needed to, to do kind of another time, like the overview of my career. And now like focus on, on like, this, like the tips or what I recommend because the academic career is tough and you need to be also lucky at some point. But what can like, what I can sell my CV or I can sell myself is like these steps, no? Like these these points. Like okay, I started with a background of a chemical engineering, and I end up doing atomically designed nanoclusters for catalysis. Even uh, moving for asymmetric catalysis, working with chirality, and all of this I could manage to do. Also, funding myself, and this is also important like the Marie Curie, the Marie Haifoglich, and the Lisa Richter, through all of the steps I was going through, and by three different countries. And if we analyze each step, each step gives you some skills, because you need to, to manage your project. And you know, normally to win this, these grants, is always you will have like the balance of high risk, high gain, but it needs to be uh, like, but you can, you need to get results. You need to prove that you will get something. Even it's really challenging, but it must be challenging. Then you, you build yourself. You build yourself through this, uh, these grants. Because also, you know, like you win this grant, but you need to produce something. It's like the synchrotron. You get your first synchrotron experiment. But if you don't get in good data that you can publish, they will not give you a second beam time then you can you are screwed you cannot come back to the synchrotron and in the academy it's the same it's all about numbers all about papers all about grants prices blah 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 but also there is a life that goes running parallel of it then i i put like okay like at the end we will define you the keywords no in each cv they will ask you your keywords and these keywords needs to include uh, multidisciplinary fields, needs to be kind of unique, needs to prove the independence, like this is really your work and it's not the work of your boss <laughs> and so on, so on, like papers, how, much, how many papers are you publishing every year, how many grants, how many awards, but this you need to, to balance with also with your life and like the family, the kids, your hobbies, your health, you need to do sports, you need to 
to live the life also. And this is in academic career is quite challenging at some point. And last year even was worse. <laughs> But even the COVID make it worse, there is also, okay, the audience is half-half, uh, but also there is a point, no? And okay, like I am infant chem, no? This is the graphic that we are used to show. Like even it's tough already, the academic career for a woman is even tougher. And it's even tougher also like when it's, you see, like I have two kids, and I want to have kids, uh, then if you f you wait for the perfect timing, mean, it's not existing, the perfect timing. Mean. And at the end, the, the, the kids, are, <laughs> I remember uh, Valentina, my first kid in Switzerland, and they came, was equipment coming. And, <laughs> and I needed to be there because the equipment was for me and was the explanation with the technician and we needed to fix it. And at the end it's like, yeah, but I have my kid and still I don't have kindergarten. And, then, and at the end I was in the office of Professor Burki <laughs> playing with a car that the secretary <laughs> looked in an office of some PhDs around. And my, my kids know exactly where are the cookies and the chocolates in each institute or who will give you some sweets or will play with them uh, in the meantime that mama needs to finish something. Then this is also a challenge. Then academic career is tougher and tougher and but uh, hopefully this is getting better for the women and getting a balance like should be the same for a man but for a woman. And like, I will use the lab, even I am passing the 30 minutes. <laughs> like, what I consider that helped me in my academic career was to get the personal grants, to have international experience, and to grow a multidisciplinary background. And, and with this, I could uh, kind of do like independent thinking at work, like it's a unique profile. It's not like, not so many people, we have all the backgrounds that I have and each one will have a unique one. And the, this helps to, to do their own research uh, uh, line. And like tips, like network and, and people, the world is really small. <laughs> Like if you see like uh, Karin introduced me at Sushi in a conference in Salamanca, and thanks to it, I could go to him and he offered me, even he didn't know me before, <laughs> to be the first person there in, in the lab. And then he just called Professor Burgi in Switzerland. And also he, I didn't, I never did an interview <laughs> with him to work with him. And, and like this, if like you, you grow your contacts and the people knows and can recommend you through like don't keep doing the same if you want to to grow you need to expand your background and like and also like a team everyone is the same in the lab for me when i enter there i love to be in the lab i hate to be in the office and every time i have some free time between writing grants or or doing lectures or boring meetings i go to the lab and it's where I really enjoy. And there I want, I am one more of the team. And I think this is important to have also a nice environment that this is what I always appreciated. And, and this is my experience from, from what, who I, I, I consider my mentors like is at Sushi and, and Professor Burgi. And then luck, <laughs> you need really luck because it's always about the reviewers that are seeing your grants or your papers and so on. And to don't give up never like you will get a lot of rejections but you you cannot then give up you need to keep going and then the things will come and with this uh i, I hope to give you a, a an overview what is an academic career it's not an easy path and everyone has their uh, unique uh, way but i hope to give you some hints and some tips and thank you Ithik, uh, because i have so great remembers from this time there and you really make me cry with this video and thank you all of you and i can just wish you uh, good luck thank you
Thank you very much to you, Noelia, for sharing your personal and your professional career with all of us. I think that we can all confirm now that you, you are really a good, a strong uh, woman, as your colleagues said. And well, uh, now it's time for questions. I'm not sure if any of you have something that you want to ask to Noelia. Please remember to raise your hands and then I'll give you the word. Okay, I see that now, Cathy Ferret, please, if you want to unmute yourself, now. Hi, uh, Noelia, I think we, we don't know each other. I think I was in the uh, doing my PhD and I left in 2008, so a bit mm -hmm. before you started. Uh, I, I listened to your lecture, I, I, I liked it very much. I think you had a, a path that indeed is not easy. And I, I think, yeah, you need to work hard and I'm, I'm sure you have been doing uh, to reach that point. I'm, I'm, I'm living in the Netherlands, I work in a company. And I was wondering in this uh, whole path that you have been going, if at, uh, at some point you have been thinking of uh, building up this career in, uh, in Spain, because I, I wonder how you, how you see the, the possibilities of, of academic careers in Spain. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like this, I have a, a nice, uh, funny history. Uh, it's like I wrote a, a grant for Spain once with the same project I won the Marie Curie. <laughs> for Spain, I got super bad reviewers <laughs> and like I got, I won the Marie Curie. I, I consider it and when, but I see it difficult. I see it difficult in a different location. And when I left 2009, the first time, 2006 was starting the crisis. Then ICAQ is like a paradise, <laughs> but uh, in the university it's not like this. And still, I know from colleagues, no. Then coming back was in my mind at the beginning, but since some years it's not anymore. And I don't know, I like to go home and be with my family and everything, but I decide that I will not come back. So <laughs> I collaborate with them a lot and, and with one uh, colleagues, uh, collaborators from Valencia, we went uh, together to the synchrotron and in a joint experiment, I prepare the experiment like I used to do, no? everything organized <laughs> and then they say like no it's hard to be a German <laughs> like she's not a Spanish anymore and I get used to to live here and and to be out then for now it's not my plan to come back <laughs> yeah, no I I sometimes I think it's a bit of a shame because I agree with you that uh, it's not always uh, easy to build uh, the, the way in Spain and and sometimes it's not easy not because you are not willing to work hard because uh, yeah. it's, it's, it's not you. <laughs> yeah, plenty of examples of that, and it's a shame that in Spain we yeah we lose a lot of talent in this. Uh, in maybe not uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what has to be changed, but uh, it's a bit of a shame. Yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> a lot of things <laughs> need to be changed under my point of view, but okay. <laughs> Uh, good luck and uh, yeah, and you too. Have a success, a successful career that you're already having now. Thank you. Thank you, Cathy. Anybody else? Margot. Ah, Margot, yes, yeah, sorry. Margot. Noelia, you're a courage woman. <laughs> that uh, nobody can say no. <laughs> um, congratulations for all the successes. I think you have an impressive career. And uh, I was wondering, because you said it already, being a woman in a scientific career is not easy. Um, have you felt any time, because you were not in Spain when you were having your kids, have you felt in Europe a different mentality about having a baby and having this gap in the middle? Do you feel the pressure that you need to hurry up and catch up where you left it because you lose track? Um, that's like, my wonder. <laughs> or do you feel that everything was fine and, and everybody understand, well, there's a time for maternity, there's a time for the research, and that can be combined and it should be combined? Yes, um, this depends the country a lot. Switzerland, you don't have maternity leave more than four months. <laughs> then for this, I actually stopped, no? 
and then I know for another people that you have the pressure to come back in Switzerland. It's like I remember the kindergarten of Valentina was the one from the university and was the group from zero months. Then you can put your kids just with one month there. And then I moved to the other stream, <laughs> that is Austria. <laughs> when you have one year, <laughs> they forbid you to work one month. I could not, I need to move a synchrotron experiment <laughs> because it was not allowed to work. <laughs> and I remember to call to Alba, you know, you need to, to move it one month earlier because if not, I cannot go by law here. <laughs> they catch me, I am dead. <laughs> and also after the birth, there is some time is forbidden. But then have the contrary, like uh, then here I'm considered like a Batman uh, because uh, I am working full time. Then, <laughs> yeah, in Switzerland, I, I would not be a, a bad mother because uh, everyone is doing it. And I remember to pick up uh, my kid in the kindergarten at five and the kindergarten was full. Yeah. Here, if I arrive at half past four, my poor kid will be one of the last ones <laughs> with the rest of uh, foreigners. <laughs> we go at half past four running, hey, my kid, <laughs> don't put it out. Then there is another kind of pressure, no? Because here is considered that the uh, woman, when have kids, needs to yeah. focus to the kids, no? And it should be. It time. should be. It should be like that, I think. Uh, and uh, and uh, it's it's nice that you could manage it, and you have two wonderful kids and uh, a wonderful career. So congratulations again. <laughs> nice you. to see you again. Nice to see you, Margot. <laughs> Thanks, Margot. I'm not sure if maybe Atsushi want to say. Yeah, something. can I? Yes. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, no. It, well, thank you so much. Wonderful talk, and uh, really always really, really nice to see you, and also you are feeling your positive energy. And uh, I know it's been. Yeah, people may have felt. You know, you have. You are the strongest woman in the world. But uh, I, I know that it's there are a lot of up and down, a lot of challenges everywhere but you somehow manages to you know all difficult moment difficult times into positive energy and positive outcome somehow and i'm just wondering maybe you you have some kind of goal which is somehow like a dream that uh, maybe making you drive towards that direction do you have anything like that uh like my objective was always to do something I love because I am, like I said, chemical engineering and actually I was working six months in Bayer, in the Bayer, in the company. And then I got super pissed because it was really boring. <laughs> and then I see the rest of my life doing the same. And I say, oof, no, this, this, I will not be happy doing this. <laughs> and then was this lecture, uh, this laboratory at the, that the research uh, and then I like it and like my father always said to be in science you need to love it because I remember my colleagues from engineering after one year they were driving Alfa Romeos going to fancy <laughs> restaurants and I was with my old old car <laughs> from the studies like earning really few money and this is everywhere still and and this is like I need to be happy and do and to be happy is to do what I love. And now I have my kids. That is what I love more. And then my my science, <laughs> and and also the independence to to be able to do what I want in industry. Was I saw is like I will never be able to do what I really want. I will always have the boss to tell me what to do. And here I'm free to think. <laughs> this is my motivation. <laughs> Okay, yeah, thank you very much. You are you're amazing. No, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Atsushi. Thank you. So thank you very much, Noelia, for your participation in this event. It was a, a pleasure to have you here. And and thank you for the invitation. <laughs> <laughs> no, please. 